Hey Masterminds, welcome back to Master Media. Today we're talking about Dragon Ball Super Episode 72, but before I get into that, the Ichigo vs. Evil God video was released on Saturday, so make sure you go check that out. It is definitely one of my best animations ever, and you are sure to love it. Okay, let's get right into this episode. We see Piccolo, Goten, and Gohan standing over Goku as he's dead, and Piccolo tries to revive him using a shock treatment kind of technique. Uh, unfortunately, it does not work, but simultaneously, Simultaneously, Goku's energy ball that he fired out before dying starts returning back to Earth, and Piccolo confirms right here that Goku in fact did that on purpose. The energy ball hits Goku and jumpstarts his heart, bringing him back to life. He immediately jumps back up, looking around for Hit, seeing that he's gone. And everybody starts asking him what exactly happened, was it the time skip? And Goku says no, it wasn't the time skip, it was something greater, but we learn later that it actually was the time skip. Then Goku chases after Hit, and he can sense Hit's energy everywhere, which is a really interesting new technique, as Hit is able to kind of push his key out in multiple directions, throwing off a regular person's ability to sense where someone's key is in a fantastic assassination technique. Hit uses his new punch, which seems to be sending a fist through space and time. It does hit Goku, but Goku was able to dodge it from being a fatal blow. Fortunately, Goku gets up and says, let's take this to a wider place, so that Hit's assassination technique where putting his aura everywhere wouldn't be a problem. They have a brief conversation, and then they begin the fight again as Hit uses... Cody. Sending another fist through space and time and Goku is able to sense it somehow or even maybe just predict where the punch is going to come. He's able to dodge it and then Hit goes into a frenzy throwing multiple punches. Goku manages to stay alive and charge at Hit and then does this beautiful technique, absolutely amazing animation. But he doesn't do anything with this. And this really caught me off guard because he puts his fingers in Hit's face and I think he's going to do a double one inch punch like he used against Frieza. I got really excited for a second but he didn't do anything with that. It's kind of like he was just showing off as he pulls back to throw his swing but he's forgetting that he is dealing with... <laughs> So Goku is getting completely wrecked by Obito, I mean Hit, and he can't figure out what this technique is. Meanwhile, we see Vegeta sweating as he's training with Whis, and he's asking Whis to cut his training short by giving him some of Granny's special sauce. Okay. I didn't really understand the entire point behind this. Uh, in fact, I don't know why Vegeta would cut his training short. I don't think he's ever tried to cut his training short. Also, I know there's been a lot of hate towards the animation quality in this episode. We did see some really, really funky pictures of Vegeta like this one. Um, I mean, I'm not I'm not impressed, but at the same time, I'm not going to hate on the animation. Like as an animator, I mean, you got to realize that they're, they're probably just letting some different artists like testing them out, giving them a chance to step up for themselves. Maybe this guy was like an in-between and he's like, hey, give me a chance to kind of show myself, you know, as a, as a keyframe artist. Uh, it didn't really work out. And that's OK. I mean, I'm not going to I'm not going to hate on them too bad, but they should, you know, as a multimillion dollar company, try to keep the animation fairly consistent. Uh, I'm not really sure why this one didn't go through quality control, but that's kind of just something that we've been seeing with Dragon Ball Super. Anyway, I'm not going to get really obsessed with it. Uh, you know, I'm going to move on because it's not really the end of the world, guys. So let's let's continue with the episode review. So Goku is completely helpless against Obito's Kamoi, and he basically just gets kicked into a mountain and does all this damage. Goku can't even land a punch on Obito. So we see Champa and Vado standing there, and they're having conversation. Champa looks really, really strange here. And basically, Vados is explaining what Hit's new technique is. And she's saying, okay, so the thing about the time skip is that he's actually able to store up the time that he's used, and he's able to basically use Kamoi and go into a parallel world ex exactly like Kamoi. I mean, it is, it is literally exactly like it. He can freely move through dimensions, not to mention in Dragon Ball Super, we have also seen Susano from Zamasu, and from Goku Black, we saw... Kagi Bunshin no Jitsu. So I don't know why Dragon Ball Super is taking all these elements of Naruto, but uh, anyways, Goku cannot defeat. <laughs> Goku is lying on the ground, he's getting completely pummeled, he can't land a significant hit on Hit, no pun intended. That's when Beerus, Whis, and Vegeta show up and they say we're here to observe. Goku powers up his key and then he figures out a way to basically defeat Hit's time skip and that's by basically expanding his key into such a wide radius, it just basically creates this gigantic explosion that somehow 
uh, cracks hits time skip. No, they didn't explain this at all, and I would have really, really appreciated an explanation. But I'm assuming that it's something like he can't cross universes or, or parallel dimensions because if he did, it would take in Goku's exploding key with it and it would also kind of blow up that alternate dimension or timeline or whatever it is that he's creating. Essentially, Goku was able to shatter it doing this and then he uses the Kamehameha and blows Hit away and is actually able to win the fight in a one versus one. Now, he was able to, to defeat Hit in basically one major attack without the Kaioken times 20, which was really really surprising i was wrong on that one uh but you know this is a filler episode so i guess i don't know they, they, maybe they're saving that for the multiverse tournament or something finally we learn after a lot of talking that it was actually goku who asked Whis to ask vados to hire hit and so i was kind of right when i said it was actually Whis. Uh, but I think we should have all realized from the beginning that it was actually Goku's intention. You know, he, he, he respects Hit's strength. Hit is like the only one that can challenge him. And it, it would be just like Goku to hire Hit to try and kill himself. Um, just so he could get that challenge. And um, I, I thought it was, you know, it was, it was right in front of our eyes. And I feel like nobody really saw it. At least in my, the comments from my preview videos and, and reviews of 71 and everything. Nobody said Goku hired Hit to kill him. Um, so if somebody made, if any Dragon Ball YouTubers made a video on that, I, I applaud them. Um, but I think we all <laughs> missed this one for the most part. And I think it was pretty obvious. It kind of just went over our heads. Anyway, that was the 72, uh, review and breakdown overall, pretty good episode. I would have really liked a more in-depth breakdown as to how Goku actually was able to defeat the time skip without even using the Kaioken. I mean, Goku even said that hit has grown much stronger since the, uh, universal tournament. So. So I don't I don't really know, um, but you know Goku's a genius. If you think about all the things he did in this episode that were genius, for one, he was able to bring himself back to life because he knew his heart was going to stop. That's genius. He was able to predict hits time skip punches that he was sending through uh, time space using Obito's Kamoi. Um, so he was able to survive. I I really seriously doubt that Vegeta would able to survive like Goku did. And then he was able to figure out a way to beat Hit's new like evolved level of time skip. So um, Goku really is a fighting genius, and you know you can't use the technique the same technique on him more than once or twice. He's going to figure it out and he's going to defeat you. So it was neat, uh, but I kind of feel like Hit is so much stronger than that. I I just really don't see him getting defeated in one attack like that. But you know it's a filler episode and they had to end it somehow. So they did. We have a little over a month before we get into the multiverse tournament arc. I'm super, super, super excited about this. There's going to be so much coverage from us Dragon Ball YouTubers and so much theory going on, talking about all the new characters and everything. So I can't wait for that. And in the meantime, we have a few more filler episodes. Uh, Gohan's great Saiyaman movie will be... Uh, the next episode on 73. I, I don't think I'm going to do a review on that. I don't usually get into reviews on like the filler type episodes, but for this one I did uh, because Hit vs. Goku was something that we've all been wanting to see again. And uh, so guys, it, please go check out my Ichigo vs. Evil God video and share it with your friends. It really needs more views. I mean, this is my best animation yet. So if you guys haven't seen it yet, uh, please go watch that. You're guaranteed to enjoy it. Even if you don't watch Bleach, there's some Dragon Ball characters in there and you're going to like it. I guarantee you. So thanks everybody for joining me today. Merry Christmas to everybody and all my fans and supporters and a happy new year. I am going to get started on some more videos soon. I, I have a lot to do this week, including the, the tutorial for beginners. I know people have been pinging me about that nonstop, so I will get on that soon. And I will check you guys tomorrow for another video. Have a wonderful day.